Today, Chris Fix teaches me how to change some drip brakes. So when I was with Michael with Florida Expeditions, he looked at my rear drum brakes and noticed that they're really muddy and dirty. So he said take a power washer to them, but I'm too lazy to go and get it because it's I have to like go around and do all that stuff and it's like a billion degrees outside. So I'm just gonna use brake parts cleaner and spray it down with the hose and just see how much I can get off with that. In Chris Fix's video, he suggests to take a picture of everything on just like where things are located so that you have something to reference to. And I do like that idea of just pretty much almost doing anything on the vehicle. Since I'm new to this, taking a picture and just seeing how it was put before I started taking things off, it's just like a really nice reference so that I can remember how things are put back. I also don't have the special tools for drum brakes, but he shows how to do this with just simple tools like this, which is nice. In his video, he only has this spring right here and this over here. I think they're just reversed because he's doing the other side, but he doesn't have this guy. And this guy goes in and wraps around this guy here. So I'm going to have to figure that out on my own probably because he was just using pliers, push this spring out and then use the flathead to pull it out. But this is stopping this guy. So I'm going to have to work on that. So I'm able to bend this spring out, but it's probably gonna fly at me, which is not gonna be fun. I can probably take this one. There we go. I'm gonna leave that guy sitting there for now. Nice. And as Chris is taking pieces apart, he's putting the pieces like back just on a flat lay so that when he gets the new pieces, he can, you know, match it up for what he had. So that's kind of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the passenger side and then driver side somewhere else and i like this idea just so that you kind of remember of all the different pieces and where they go and so i'm just going to go to the other side and do the same thing actually instead of doing a piece on this side and doing a piece on the other side and keep alternating and pretty much doing them at the same time i'm just going to do one side at the time the reason is is just in case like my photos didn't turn out i looked at them they seem fine but if i can't figure something out i have the other side button like flipped as a reference. So I'm gonna do this side completely and then the other side completely. So the issue I'm having with these vice grips is that you have to push in and hold the pin in the back and then twist, but I can't, I don't have enough room to twist with these. Found some smaller guys. I did it! Chris also pretty much takes this all apart, but I'm leaving it together since it all did come off. And the reason why I took it apart was because on one piece, uh, the parking brake was still connected to it, but that's still on the Jeep itself. So I just left it all connected as one just so that it's easier to kind of see. And I may have to reuse, I think, this piece, but it's just nice to have it all like this. And this is similar to what he was looking at on the parking brake, so he takes this off. Actually, I might just leave this on because if it's going back in, why, why take it off? I might just clean it up, but it's just dangling there, why not? I'll just leave it. Now I'm at the part before he removes the wheel cylinder, so he just sprays everything down with brake cleaner and uses a wire brush to clean everything off and get the rust off and get these contact points all cleaned up, so that's what I'm going to do. It's probably not a good idea to inhale all the crud and dust that's coming off of this. I'm assuming part of it's rust, part of it is brake dust, and so I have a mask and I'm going to do my best and hold my breath when I can. Now it's time to move on to the wheel cylinder. I also ended up buying this six piece flare nut wrench set for the brake lines and other lines and stuff because everybody keeps saying that I need this so I picked one up. It excused the bad lighting and non proper camera angles. This is not a how to video. This is just seeing if Chris Fix is really the guru of all of this. So 
We're gonna find out. It says to remove the brake line first. This, this thing looks crusty and dusty in here. And of course, Chris Fix makes his things look super easy, super quick. And I mean, it's easy. Of course, it's not gonna be as easy as what he's doing because he's been doing it a lot and then it's just showing you the camera angles. Probably already loosened the bolt already. Probably greased it up just so that he can just get that one shot and make it easy for the viewer to understand what is going on. But it's nice. Chris Fix always get, gets me motivated, feeling right that I can go ahead and fix my car with common hand tools. Yeah, it'll get you right. Chris also says that the brake lines and these bolts go to 10 to 15 foot pounds. And he says it's a quarter of a turn. That's probably like a screw up because I don't know what that means. A quarter of a turn. I don't know if it's like, okay, get it snug, then quarter of a turn. That's kind of what I'm thinking. But 10 to 15 foot pounds isn't a lot, so you don't want to over tighten. So yeah, I mean, it happens with tutorial videos where things just, it'll make sense to you, but may not to other people. But yeah, I'm, I'm assuming quarter of a turn just means that snug and then go, go a quarter of a turn from there or maybe like semi-tight. I don't know, I don't really know. I'm just gonna tighten it down, but not hard. He also says that he likes to put anti-seize on these bolts back here, so we're just gonna do that. Another statement on Chris making it look so easy is that I was able to get one bolt in, but the other bolt just I'm having issues. I gotta finagle it. He just seems this is like, put it in, boop, 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 done. Put it in, boop, 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 done. Put this in, boop, boop, boop. It's not like that. It's gonna take a little bit more time for beginners like myself, so it is what it is. I think that's good. It did less than a quarter of a turn based on my theory, so we'll see if it goes well. I think I called this piece the parking brake before, but it's the emergency brake, and I noticed that it wasn't connected to my brake pads, and that's because it was missing a clip, and that's probably why I don't have an emergency brake working right now. Um, and, but he does clean this up nice and nice and clean, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Now I've also laid out my new stuff compared to my old stuff, and it's obvious that I'll be using like the old hardware, some of the old hardware over with the new stuff. So I've noticed that he actually has some newer hardware that he uses that I don't have. So I'm just gonna see, I'm probably just gonna, you know, wire brush it down and move it over to the, the new one. So I've been noticing all the springs are new, so I don't know, I guess I'm just gonna reuse this one since it didn't come with the kit. And I have to reuse this piece too. Using my reference photo since I had to take it apart. Spring goes in first and then this guy. Did I do it? Looks right to me. So he installs them one at a time. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Install this piece. Get the lube up the contact points just a little bit. This one's very globby, starting to drip. I'm gonna clean that off. So I gotta install this. And I think the, the parking, he keeps calling this the parking brake, but then he alternates between the emergency brake. I think this is the emergency brake since the brakes, I, I have no idea. Don't don't quote me, calls this the parking brake, emergency brake, maybe they're interchangeable. I'm thinking that this goes right there. That's what makes sense to me. It might go lower, actually. No, that wouldn't go there. It's this, I need to figure out where this goes. It's like that, I need to reference my photos. So looking at my photos before, this was hooked in here. And so this goes in here somewhere. And then this pin comes through there. I think that's it. Right there, yeah, that, I mean, that things look to be lined up. That's going in there. That's contacting up here. Then I gotta grab these vice grips. So I'm having issues with the vice grips grabbing this, the whole thing, and then the spring at the same time, so. I'm gonna see how he did it really quick. So he was able to just grab this. Maybe I just need to grab it tighter. Push down and tighten. Oh my goodness. This is the hardest part right here. It's not working, Chris. Pull this guy up temporarily. I'm gonna get this set up. 
Let's see if I maybe put it on the ground, try to grab it and push down. It's like I got it. So I got to do that first before I put on my brake pad. I'm already not doing what of what Chris said. He said wash your hands after you get antices so you don't get anything on the pad. And I've been doing my best. I'm not touching this at all. So I think it'll be okay. This goes in there. Just trying to make sure the parking and or emergency brake is behind the pad. And that seems to fit. Throw that on. Now we'll try to do this. So I think what's going on, oh, ah, got to do this again. So this was off camera. Um, this fell in my brake parts cleaner and dirt. So that's not good. Um, I'm going to see if I can clean this off somehow and still use it. I think I'll be fine. It says the cleaner can be used on brake linings, brake shoes, drums, rotors, caliber units, pads, and other areas of the braking mechanism while they're still intact. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this down and dry it off and I hope we'll be okay. I think I'm running out. I hope we're going to be okay, guys. I'm going to take this out of the way. Now I'm going to figure this guy out. So I know I don't want to be too far down because then I can't push this in all the way. It's almost like I just want it to be on the tips of it. So I've just been putting it on the ground, grabbing it in the tip just a little bit. And pushing down and locking it and that's what happens so just got to keep doing this I guess keep trying and get a little bit more grip nope as this was drying I went ahead and just washed my hands so now let's try it again all right this came off once again this is not that easy Chris come on Chris fix it's not that easy. This is like my hundredth time trying this now. I think I got it this time. I did it! When I put the emergency brake in, it doesn't want to stay, so I'm gonna leave it there for now. And I'm just gonna remember to put it in once I get the other side on. Same exact thing I did the last one, so I'm not gonna show me struggling a million times like I did before. Put in this thing, I sprayed it down and wire brushed it up. The parking brake won't budge. This is not easy, Chris. Come on now. I'm getting antices all over me. This is just not working. More antices. I have to clean this guy up. Make sure all the thread and all that stuff is all fine because we're reusing this. Now I want to use antices on each of the individual components, I guess. So I'm just gonna brush it around probably don't need too much but these need to be lubricated so that they can go in and out easy that's probably way too much definitely used way too much on that but I think I'll be okay I hope and then this little guy doesn't need a lot either all right so this guy goes he goes in right there and I'm just gonna unscrew this guy right now far out so that he can just hold in there because these pads are flopping all over the place. And then I gotta get that bottom screw. I meant bottom spring. This guy hooks on up here. And I think this guy's gonna help hold things together. And then I have this spring for the self-adjusting lever, which is kind of confusing because that other spring is like right behind it. I'm gonna go look at the other side and see what, what it's like. Yep, so this gets sandwiched between that spring that I just put in and the self-adjusting lever. I almost feel like this should have gone in before I put that spring in, which I think I'm going to do that. Remove this spring. Hopefully I don't break it. Okay. And there goes that. Let's remove this spring. The emergency brake popped out again, which isn't fun. Now let's rehook everything. Parking brake is out. Okay. All right. I'm ready to move on to the next step. But I can't do that because my iPhone is overheating, so I have to let it cool down. I'm just gonna go inside and take a little break then. And as I was getting up, I noticed that the parking brake, the emergency brake, wasn't in. So I, on his, it had like a little clip up here to be able to clip it and hold it into place, but I don't think that it will fit. I can go and look. 
Yeah, so his used a clip like this and it had a stud to be able to wrap around and then you bend it so that it can't move. I don't think it really has enough room for this to fit underneath and for it to bend around. So I'm just gonna have to remember to keep an eye on this and make sure it's in there. But I'm gonna go inside and take a break. Okay, so I'm almost done. This guy on. It's actually really nice to go back and reference the other piece. This somehow loops around here somewhere, I think. But I'm not sure what does this, what does this connect to? I don't know yet, not sure. I'm gonna look at my photos. All right, so it just seems like this just gets sandwiched from this guy. This goes in here, and wraps around that, but this goes through here like that. So I'm going to hook this in there. I'm gonna route this guy. So now I don't know if it's the spring and this. I think this goes in the back. The look, yep. So this guy goes in the back. Chris says to take screwdriver to this. This is all still attached. <clears throat> that is around there. Parking brake is in. I'm just double checking everything is still in. Everything is still in. What's next? So Chris actually uses a wrench with a, a non-rotating end like this with a closed end. And then he uses it to pry on the spring under there. But I think I'm just going to try to use this flathead. I think. This is kind of dangerous. So the brake pad is actually, it needs to go up a little bit higher. And this thing came off. So I'm gonna have to take this off and redo it. There we go. All right. Now I gotta redo this. That's wrapped around. Parking brake is still in. Everything is still connected on the bottom. Where it needs to be, this guy is kind of off. He's all in there. Yep, and this guy's last. This seems to not be working that great. Boom! All right, double check everything. Double check my photos. Just don't want to screw any of this up. And so everything is exactly how the photo is. Now I know that we have to adjust the guy that's down here. Before we adjust the adjuster, Chris actually bled the brakes first, but what I'm going to do is I need to extend my brake line. So I'm going to do that since it's going to basically leak out and then I will just prep both sides to then pretty much do the bleeding then. So I'm not going to show me extending my rear brake lines because it's fairly simple. But the one thing I did want to note is this is the diff breather tube. So it goes like in the end of the brake line, but the brakes don't pass through it. It just holds it and it's a diff breather. And I noticed that it's, it was like completely clogged. So I took a needle through here and then brake cleaner through the other side and try to clean it out as much as possible. And now I can see through it and, and brake cleaner does go through it before brake cleaner wouldn't even go through this. So my diff probably wasn't even breathing at all. But also considering of how dirty this is, this makes me concerned on the inside of the actual axle. So I know I want to do an axle upgrade maybe in the future, but I hope it's later and not sooner. So yeah, I'm just going to put this back in and we are going to bleed the brakes. So I was going to make my own bleeder, but I couldn't get this bottle to dry. It's really humid here, so it's really hard to get things to dry well. So there's just a little bit of water specks in here, and I know you don't want water in your brake lines. So I'm just going to have somebody step on the brakes for me and then bleed it the traditional way. I was having issues on this side. I was stripping the, the bolt. So I had to use these to get it started at least, and then it ended up working out well. So. This one was just sticking real bad and I couldn't get it out no matter what I used, even if I used this or if I used the actual line wrenches. It was, it's just at a weird angle and you can't really get a good angle on it. So now I gotta make the adjustment on the bottom and then I'll be done. So the adjustment on this is as close in as I can. And I do feel like there might be rubbing a little bit. I'm gonna double check to make sure that everything is situated correctly. That's good. That's good. So everything is in here correctly. I do feel like that there is some like resistance going on, but I mean, that's as, as small as that I can go. So that's it really. 
I gotta drive it around, but I have something going on with my transfer case right now. So I think I just have to change the fluid and I'm waiting a couple days to change the fluid and I have to do the front. So, I mean, all in all, I mean, if this all goes well, then it was good. I'm not sure I had some hiccups in here and there. That's just because techniques and just understanding of how things are going. It's a lot easier once you've done it a million times. On the other side, it took me way less time. One, because I wasn't trying to film myself and talk to the camera. Two, because since I already did it, I already knew kind of what to expect and what to what to do in the different situations. So now I know how to change my drum brakes, I think. We gotta see if they work, but I'll let you know if they work or not in the next video, which should be, I'm changing the front brakes and I need to do the wheel bearing of the hub and the U-joint in the axle. So that's the next video that I'll be doing. Not really following any specific video. Chris Fix does have a video, so uh, yeah. Thank you, Chris Fix, for posting these videos, really, because they really do help. And pretty much anybody else, like Bleep and Jeep and Admiral Off-Road, those have been very helpful in terms of trying to figure out exactly what to do and how to change things and all that stuff. So I wouldn't say that it's necessarily easy, but it's not hard. It's it's not, I wouldn't say it's easy just because there's, when I think of easy, I'm like, oh, it's just, you know, pick this up, it's easy. But no, it's like, you gotta do some finagling, a little bit figuring out, a little bit of problem solving. If you like that kind of stuff, this is fun. For me, at least it's fun because this is the first time I'm doing it. If I have to do this over and over again, it's probably, not fun so anyway i'm braxton this is trailspin tv thank you for watching please like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video which will be my brakes my front brakes bye